kicking off your day with us. Ah, man. Damn. Detroit Pistons, let's go. Chat family is always your big part of the show. Hit that like button if you already have encouraged somebody else to do the same. Definitely. I'm just impressed that you're, you're, I see you cooking Wake Up all the way up. I don't know if you guys can see it. You put Wake Up Woodward up on the scrub on the big screen there. Hey, had to, man. Uh, listen, oh. this was a picture that I took last night while at the game. It almost seemed as if uh, they knew that they were going to get this dub. Yeah. This was pregame. It was 3 and 3 day. They had Royce of 5 9. They had Angelique. They had a lot of different people in there. Jamison Williams was in the building as well. It was pretty festive night. There were a ton of Toronto Raptors fans. But there were also a ton of Detroit Pistons fans that got a little bit louder than them as well. That's what and, I want to uh, see, though. That's yeah. what I want to see out of Little Caesars Arena. Of course, you can't see all the all the empty seats, but that looks literally like it's on fire. Love to see Little Caesars lit up like that. Kool Aid last yes, week, and and we've we've hit on it a couple times since last week. But we're talking about this team building an identity. We're talking. We we saw them. What was it? Two three weeks ago. After the trade deadline, after yeah. these players come in, talk about that identity and wanting to be a team that runs through the tape. Yep. I yep. interpreted it in first a uh, uh, silly me as, oh, well, you know, watching film. No, no, no. They're in, they're in a race. They're trying to beat their opponent, run through the tape. Are you feeling that a little more? I mean, last night, Jalen Duren, 24, 24 points, 23 rebounds. Like, yeah. Simone Fatecchio, he's playing well. kool is this identity being formed? What, what are you – what they say after the game yesterday. Yeah, yeah listen, uh, and you're exactly right on that. The running through the tape like a runner, instead of getting to the finish line and starting to just kind of coast because either there is something because you believe you have the win in the bag or because you don't think that there's anything really left to win for yourselves. A lot of times you can see people just pace it. Monty Williams and this team, they actually want to try and finish off this season as strongly as they can. And I know that there's people that got the jokes like, oh, man, a little bit, you know, too much too late. Well, this is a completely different team. And right now, a lot of these guys, they want to be here. They want to play for each other. And that's the difference. Everybody who hit that podium last night, uh, especially Isaiah Stewart, who said, you know what? Winning feels good. This is a feeling that we want to continue to carry in our momentum. We want to carry to the end of the season. And obviously, they wanted to have a much better season this year. But one th kind of underlying thread or comment that I continue to hear from some of the guys is how they praise the current group that they have here right now. When we go back to that trade deadline and we go back even further to January 14th, you know, the Detroit Pistons are now 9 and 17 since January 15th. And that includes nine, the two. That includes the two questionable losses to Orlando and to New York. If those were wins, you're looking at 11 and 15 team right now. We wanted to see this squad go on the type of run that they did in Cage rookie season. Uh, where they went 10 and 14 in the games that he played in. And they're kind of in the midst of a stretch like that right now. They haven't won back-to-back -back games at home since that time. And you want to be able to know that the squad that you have right now, that there's improvements, that people are actually hustling, that people are playing defense. The defense continues to improve. You want to talk about before these trades, having a 129 uh, defensive rating, which was last in the league. It has to have gotten better. Uh, bro, they now have a 114 defensive rating. That sound from you said 120? 129. 129 down to 114? Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't think you guys understand the type of jump that they've made defensively since they've in instituted some of these changes and these trades and got people in here that Isaiah Stewart, quote unquote, said, these guys want to try. These guys are playing hard. These guys want to play defense. In terms of finding that right mix and finding any silver lining in a season that's been a serious gut punch to a lot of fans. I think that's it, that they finally found a group of young talent that wants to be here. They found the players that want to play defense. They found the players that want to play tough. And when you find that mix, that's when you go out there and you absolutely have to surround them with the right veteran talent. Taj Gibson, I know we kind of joked about it a little bit, but <laughs> hey, I have to take I have to eat some of that. Hey, has he actually been helping out? He has James Wiseman, a lot, uh, of the, a lot of the bigs. The one thing that I know I'll is take that back. when Rashid Wallace was an assistant coach here, he had this philosophy of dunk everything. Taj Gibson comes in with this same kind of mantra of dunk everything and play physical. What we've seen out of Jalen Duren and James Wiseman since Taj Gibson has been on this squad is a little bit different tenacity in which they play the game with, man. And I absolutely love it. Like I said, you, I can't, I can't really uh, complain about it, man. It's not a lot to criticize in that regard. And three out of four wins in their last four games, it's, uh, it's, it's progress. You know what? I'm excited. I, I've noticed a trend, and, and they're playing well. But in the last couple of games, the refs are actually blowing the whistle. Oh yeah. Like oh, what, yeah. last night, 24 of 31 free throws. They got to the line 31 times. 
It wasn't too long ago Monty Williams was blowing up at the refs in his press conference after the game after some pretty horrendous calls. And I'm going to ask you a question from the chat. Eduardo O'Neill says, question for Kool-Aid. If the NBA had an NFL-type draft, would he still be preaching and wanting the team to win or just to secure the number one draft pick? Uh, no more draft picks. They, they have their young talent. I, I don't in think... That in, in, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off. No more draft picks like... It, no matter who was on the board this year or the fact that is it a down year and then or, or there's no clear number one it's considered a, okay. a little bit of a down year i do i am intrigued by alex R. he plays a position of need for the detroit pistons but with that number one draft pick not that i don't want them to add anybody in the draft but with that top draft pick i think it presents an opportunity for the detroit pistons to actually utilize that on draft day in a trade to bring in somebody like a vet who can absolutely help this team in the starting lineup that's kind of more where I'm looking at. If they do decide to draft somebody instead, I, I do believe that there's going to be a period of time where that, that draft pick, that rookie, is going to take a little bit of time getting acclimated to the NBA, getting acclimated to the speed, getting acclimated to the defense. This team needs to hit the ground running. I talked with some Pistons personnel last night, and that's their hope, is that what we're seeing right now, and especially Cade Cunningham, who's not going to be rehabbing this summer, but actually working on his game. He wasn't able to work on his game. Last year was just about, last offseason was about rehabbing from missing the previous year due to surgery. This year, they have uh, expectations of hitting the ground running when next season begins. And I think that they do that best by trading out of this number one draft pick. I love that. I, I think of it out kind of, of like that J.J. McCarthy, not this past year, but the previous year where his first season, he wasn't able to practice in the offseason or wasn't able to throw because uh, of shoulder surgery. Each year, his shoulder's gotten stronger. He's gotten more comfortable with the offense. This isn't a J.J. McCarthy topic, but Sam Flannel, Kool-Aid was talking about the need for a veteran, kind of like a, a Udonis Haslam type, a Udonis Haslam on the heat. Am I right, Flannel? I'm not giving Taj Gibson more credit than I give to <laughs> Jalen Duran, who actually had a 2020, and to James Wiseman, who actually is improving. And hell, even Isaiah Stewart, he shot three of three from three last night. Shout out to him. His three-point percentage is actually pretty good this year, which a lot of people don't know, but it is true. But anywho, when, when, when I talk about the Pistons, if you're one of those people that says too little too late, you're right. You are 100% right. There is nothing that can be done save for going on a tremendous run of winning like you know, four, like 12 out of their next 17 to salvage any modicum of a successful season. However, however, I'm still looking at this as right now, I can't change it. I want them to end this season successful. And I've said many, many times that I want them to win 18. Symbolically, it would just be a terrible, terrible look if they didn't win more games than they did last year with a healthy Cade Cunningham. And last night presented a golden opportunity. Kool-Aid, I'm curious, as you were there, when you saw the lineup that Toronto was rolling out, were you kind of like, we better win this game? We absolutely have to. That's what everybody was saying yeah. in the media. Everybody was saying it. Pistons personnel, media personnel, everybody was like, they got to go out there and they got to smack these guys. They have to. When, when you look at what the Detroit Pistons have on their side and the hope that they that they are trying to instill and, and, and project with this young crew, that's a game that you have to absolutely go out there and win. And it's like you said, Flannel, these are the games that, as you're counting, can they get to this 18? Go out there and win the games that you're supposed to, which is something that they were not doing earlier in the season at all. And it largely stemmed from the defensive side. And the only reason why we talk about Taj Gibson is because – Jalen Duran, Isaiah Stewart, and James Wiseman, they're talking about Taj Gibson and what he's already doing for them on this squad. That's the only reason why I did bring it up. And uh, they're saying that he's making an impact already. So, you know, it, it's, it's not something to necessarily write home about, you know. And when you're looking at this Detroit Pistons team, I agree with you. It is a lot too late, man. It is. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just, it's in the grand scheme of things, this squad had the recipe to go out there and be 20 plus wins. Uh, a potentially challenge for 25 to 30 wins on this season. They had that recipe. A, a healthy season of Kay Cunningham. Jalen Duran's coming back, and he was looking like a man child as well. They hit some bumps in the road. Their veterans started off injured. They didn't really have an identity. They didn't really play defense, and the players that they were relying on were a big part of that. I look at this thing as a tale of two halves. After mm. they started making their trades, it's a completely different team. They didn't just make one or two trades. They did something where they changed up the types of players that they were going to run with. And I have an article that's coming out as well about what the Pistons need to add to this squad before they even think about adding any type of outside shooting. Even though I know that this era is about three-point shooting, every brand of Pistons basketball that's ever been a championship winner, they didn't play to the era. 
They played to what we know has been always identified with winning Pistons basketball, and that's physicality. That's towing the line. That's, that's earning the fouls that you're going to be called for rather than complaining about them. This is what I want to see the Detroit Pistons get back to. Get out there and just play the brand of basketball. If you want to talk about restore, which is what they dubbed this rebuild, then it has to be about making sure that guards aren't able to just waltz into the lane and make layups easily. It has to be about making sure that there aren't a bevy of players that are going to go into the paint and grab the rebounds over you and get second chance points. It has to be about this because the Detroit Pistons rank 25th in the league, and it's disappointing, 25th in the league in opponents' points in the paint. These are the types of things, when you talk about the identity of a winning Detroit Pistons team, that are a little bit backwards. Bring the physicality defensively. That's where the identity has to start. Every era of basketball the that they've won, the Detroit Pistons has forced the NBA to have to change the rules right after they won the championships. That. Get back to that. Get back to that. I love that. I love that. Bro, it, 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 it's <laughs> at least something to be excited about going into this last stretch. They're battling. Oh, that, that's why I, I had that smirk on my face. I, we are talking yesterday. Is there a road to 18 wins? Like, are they going to pull this off? <laughs> the, the, the flannel way. <laughs> yeah. The flannel road. No, there, there most certainly is. I mean, I'm looking at this current homestand that they're on, and I touched on it briefly yesterday. They've won three out of their first four. They got two against Miami. Go split those. Go split those. And then they have four really tough ones coming up at Boston, home versus the Pacers, Boston, and uh, New Orleans. Win one out of three. Win at Washington. Win at home versus Memphis. Win at Memphis. Win at Brooklyn. Win versus Chicago. And win at, at San Antonio. I think that would actually give you more than 18 wins. But those are all winnable games. Hell, even go to New York where New York Knicks are obviously a good team, but the Pistons already almost beat them there. And like I said before, for people who think I'm kind of talking out of both sides of my mouth after what I said on BDE on Monday, all of that, I still believe all of that, and I definitely had a little bit of a reaction after the weekend. However, what choice do I have but want this Pistons team to finish the season strong and show me that there's something to build upon? I mean, Jalen Duran last night giving me a 2020. I'm happy about that. The biggest Jalen Duran fan at this network, I think, is Neil Rule, and Neil Rule even said he kind of reminds me of like a young Dwight Howard. I think that's a little aggressive, particularly defensively, but Jalen Duran appears to be a guy that you can pencil in for the next decade as top five in the league in rebounds, a double-double almost every single night, and that's what you would have taken that when you drafted him. And obviously, Cade Cunningham playing like an all-star, even though he didn't play the fourth quarter yesterday. You saw a big fourth quarter from Marcus Sasser and Jaden Ivey. So there are things to build upon. And unlike earlier in the year, during the games that you think they're supposed to win, they actually went out and beat the uh, the uh, corpse of the Toronto Raptors, which is pretty much what they were last night. But they did it. They <laughs> had to do it, and they did it. JB, oh, man. JB, I know you got some last comments before we go and get to Doc Macaroon. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just wanted to make this real quick comment yeah. and ask you, Kool-Aid, because I know we got the Doc coming the on. Doc. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to know, how, how was this combination working together last night? Oh, my God. <laughs> JB with the fire. I <laughs> saw <laughs> everyone who's on. <laughs> Is this Shannon or uh, Troy? <laughs> That's Bruce Brown. Bro, oh, the Bruce Brown. Bruce so everyone Brown listening on audio Dick. only, there's a picture of Bruce Brown <laughs> and Grady Dick checking into the game, standing back to back. You can just see the last names on the back of their jerseys Dude, of Bruce the, Brown these two and never Grady Dick. You know together. what makes it better is that Cade is in the background looking like, what the F is that? <laughs> that was all oh, man, Brown Dick's coming into the game. <laughs> no, like the, the players. Ass on the end. <laughs> and you know what? This you is it. I mean, how you can't find a better way to transition to no, the doc. We, <laughs> I, I want to get his comments on on uh, on that pick. So had that ready to go, ready to go, yeah. JB. And I saw a couple questions in the chat. We'll save them for a uh, mailbag. Yeah, right? Doc's on the line, so we're gonna get yeah. to him. We will definitely get back to some of these questions. Uh, and uh, Doc actually asked a really good question yesterday, both to Carlton Davis and Graham Glasgow. We're gonna show you the Graham Glasgow clip. <laughs> Uh, before he hops on the line. So, Kool-Aid, will you tell him about Premier Pet? Yeah, there's no transition for this. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm just reading. Let We're it just fly. Read it today. <laughs>